Hello. What is this? Who are your people? Those are some very deep existential questions for a fucking Nazi. This series is kind of interrogating that fine line between justice and revenge. And I think we see a lot of different sides of that argument, even within Meyer's team. And I wondered, wh where do your characters kind of fall on that? I don't think I knew what, that Murray and Mindy really knew what they were getting into as mm. clearly. And you know what was really cool about that? It was the very first time we were together doing this, which was in a, episode two in this recording studio. It was actually Al asking the question. And he said, so... And he always did it, you're right, he always, he never lost his accent, so he kept his Yiddish accent. I remember thinking, this is pretty extraordinary. He's asking a fundamental question about the series here, in, the, in this episode. He's just saying, so, so we're judge and jury and executioner all in one. How many times have we done this? And aren't there consequences? And we were like, this is fundamental. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we got to explore, and then we realized that we weren't all that, we weren't Mission Impossible, remember? Not. And we realized we're not that great at this. They right? <laughs> yeah. they we're learning, on the, we're learning yeah. on the job. Yeah. Yeah. And so we all have different motives and different feelings about what we're about to do. And some may be more enthusiastic, more action oriented. Uh, Louis' character seemed more action oriented and more mm -hmm. battle ready for his own He reason. seems the least conflicted by bloodshed. But, yeah, by bloodshed, yeah. right? Yeah. He was right into yeah. it. Yeah. Although we find out he maybe is the most conflicted by, yeah, by, by bloodshed yeah. in That's some right. ways. And so, yeah, but it was that very first time we were all together as vigilantes hmm. that we saw the differences between us. Yes. You know? And, and we kind of, uh, the great thing about the characters is they sort of roll their eyes at each other going, you're useless at this, yeah. I'm great at this. <laughs> uh, but eventually through the series, that... that um, the prism shifts in a way, and they have to start looking into themselves mm -hmm. at their own flaws and their own downfalls, and and uh, and where they're getting a little too um, uh, bloodthirsty, and yeah, where things are getting complicated. They, it it yeah. becomes a much more internal battle yeah. for each of them. I always thought of my, I always thought of my character as Lonnie as being attracted to it in a kind of. Um, superhero way sure. or you know he says to to Jonah in the second episode like this is just like the movies but as it goes on it's not just like the movies you know he's really quite rattled by the ethics of what they're doing mm -hmm. I mean it changes I, I think why you why one would become a hunter is not why one stays a hunter hmm. you have to kind of keep that's reassessing right. yeah. what you're doing as you go mm. and the more blood that's spilled the more those questions become quite pressing and hard to answer my character yeah. by the end of the series stands in a different place um, but I would say she's firmly on the side of justice and like justice being a very black and white concept for her mm -hmm. yeah quite very you know exactly where you're going yeah <laughs> well I suppose on the complete flip side of that <laughs> right. is my character um, yeah, so it's hard to get quite as separate as our characters are. This like, is true. Yeah, we're about as separate as it, as it goes. Um, yeah, he's obviously not in, interested in justice whatsoever. <laughs> he's just more interested in playing with people and exerting his power. And lawlessness, almost, right? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's a complete anarchy. I'd say for Roxy, I think she starts as a, like, by any means necessary kind of person. Mm -hmm. But the deeper she gets into it and actually is doing the torturing and the killing and all of that, she starts to question that. Mm -hmm. So she starts out pretty clear, and then there's a question. I don't know that there's an answer for her, <laughs> honestly. And I don't know that there's an answer for any of the, mm -hmm. any of the characters. I think the show is presenting a question, mm -hmm. and it does not have an answer to where that line is mm -hmm. between revenge and justice. I do think there is a cost to vengeance. That's that's the that's the argument right there, yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know I, I think Joe's being a professional killer, from being a former soldier, and has been fighting that kind of uh, that dilemma, the 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 righteousness of killing people, and somehow has justified it for for a while. But I think his past will catch up to him eventually. Hmm. And Mindy, I mean, especially knowing she has a family and I, I feel like she has a very different perspective on things. I feel that there's this huge struggle about, um, uh, you know, knowing somewhere uh, in myself, Mindy, uh, that the way forward is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, it's unforgivable to me mm -hmm. 
what happened. So, so I think there's always that that conflict in, in me. You, you know, at, at the moment I'm proceeding um, with the revenge, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's uncomplicated at all. Right. But Mindy certainly is the voice of reason for. Jonah not joining the group. For, for oh yeah, mm -hmm. just because you know, to I don't want another baby to be harmed. Right. We're a lock picker, spy, soldier, master of disguise, Showtime. and two weapons experts. We would bring God's justice. There's so much superhero and comic book imagery in mm -hmm. this. If if you if your characters could have a superpower that represented them, what do you think it would be? It would just be to be able to control people's minds, right? Mm -hmm. It would be to have complete dominion over other people hmm. and to influence them, I suppose. Mine is a version of that. Oh, really? So yeah, maybe we're something closer like, because than... I'm feeling like she would be, she would want wow. to compel people to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of mind control. Interesting. It's an interesting thing, I think, being black in America, mm -hmm. especially at this time, and about the invisibility of black people up until this point, how like white people didn't see black people until a certain period in time, really. In the 70s, there was um, an opportunity for black people to say, I'm black and I'm proud, you know, I'm beautiful, my hair is beautiful, my skin is beautiful. So I think she would maybe like uh, play with invisibility. Hmm. I think being an Asian person during the time period <laughs> Uh, Joe's even more invisible, so I guess he doesn't need that superpower. <laughs> 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 um, gosh, I think if he could teleport to another planet, yeah, um, and be a, he's, he's a very lonely character. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one for Mindy? If I have a superpower, it might be an attempt at understanding the other side, mm -hmm. understanding compassion. It's a moral <laughs> superpower. There's, it comes yeah. from, it comes from um, uh, and it's a dangerous one. And it's, it's uh, the righteousness of victims hmm. who believe that they have um, a carte blanche on justice. And you don't, but you can. And victimization, especially if you believe, you know, your Holocaust is more important than anybody else's. Your catastrophe is more important that can lead you to morally questionable acts. It's a superpower that's a dangerous one. Moral superpower, moral superiority. Huh. Well, I guess my cloak of invisibility doesn't seem so, <laughs> <laughs> so cool now. I was going to say, we really... <laughs> yeah, jeez, Saul. Saul. Well, if only they could see you now, right? A real-life fucking Jupiter hero.